Would you ever fly on America's worst airlines? Because according to Google, American Airlines and Spirit were voted the worst in the entire country. But how bad can they really be and which is truly the worst? First up today, I'm gonna be flying American and when I was doing the check-in process, things got off to a terrible start. So after getting the check-in email, I put in my last name and booking reference before selecting my seats. After this, I got an error saying I needed to fill out my passenger information. So I went ahead and did that, but after agreeing to not having any hazardous materials, it still said I couldn't check in online and that I needed to see an agent at the airport. So obviously I have no idea why it wasn't able to check me in online. So we're gonna head inside and figure out what's going on, but it is way too early in the morning. Now at Toronto's airport, instead of agents, we only had a kiosk as an option. So hopefully this is going to work. Similar to the online check-in, I needed to type in my booking reference, agree that I didn't have any prohibited items and scan my passport. And luckily I was able to print out my boarding passes and check in without any more issues. I still don't know why I wasn't able to check in online because it was pretty much the same exact process. But luckily we didn't have to speak to a gate agent and now all we have to do is head through security and check out the lounge. And normally at this airport, I'll use the Amex line for security, but this time I tried Nexus, which ended up being way worse than I had expected. But soon enough, we were through customs and into the terminal. So normally when I travel at this airport, I do the American Express line, but because I got Nexus, I decided to try that out. And I was under the assumption that meant no more double inspection at security, but it turns out I still got all of my bags searched and I got pat down. But now that we're finally in the terminal, we're gonna go check out the lounge and then we're gonna catch our flight. Because if American is really as bad as people say, I'm definitely gonna need this lounge break. Now I'm sure you thought I'd have access to the American Airlines Admiral Club, but that's only for people who buy an annual membership, American Airlines credit card or day pass. So instead, we're gonna be grabbing a bite at the Plaza Premium Lounge beside it. For breakfast, there was something with beans, potatoes, sausages, eggs, oatmeal, and a bunch of other things to choose from. And after finishing my meal, it was time to head for the flight. So I'll be honest, that lounge was definitely mediocre at best. The food selection was extremely poor. The lounge itself was quite small, but the one plus side was that all the staff were incredibly friendly. But still, overall, I'll give it a six out of 10. But anyways, while we're here waiting for the flight, I thought that now would be a great time to tell you guys a little bit more about American Airlines and some of the reviews, just so we know what we're in for. According to reviews, American Airlines is one of the most unreliable airlines in the world. It uses automated customer relations bots instead of people. And according to America's most and least favorite airlines, American ranks at the bottom of each category. Normal customers also have a lot to say, claiming they'll never fly American again, that American is the worst major airline, and one person even said they just straight up suck. So now that we kind of know what we're in for, hopefully the flight goes way better than what the reviews say. So let's go find out what American is really like and how they compare to Spirit. And now since I'm flying from Canada, American Airlines offers no direct flights to my final destination. So lucky for you guys, I'm gonna be showing you both their American Eagle and normal American Airlines flights. So we will truly get the full experience before comparing them to Spirit. Hi there, good morning. Good, morning, how are you? Good, you? Perfect. Thank you so much. Lucky for me, today was quite nice out, so walking to the plane, I didn't need to worry about being rained on, and after walking down the gateway, it was time to get on board. But first, I need to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp, for making this video possible. After flying all these horrible airlines, sometimes I get a lot of stress or anxiety dealing with everything that goes on, and the best way that I found to deal with it is talking to someone. Growing up, there's been times in my life where I felt at my lowest, and sometimes it's hard to share what's going on even with close friends or family. And that's why having a therapist to talk to has always been the best option for me. Thanks to BetterHelp, their mission is making therapy more affordable and accessible by allowing you to find a therapist by answering just a few questions. With that, BetterHelp can match you with a professional therapist in as little as a few days. But that's not even the best part because it is fully remote. So if you travel a lot like me, you will always have access. Because BetterHelp makes it easier than ever to find a therapist that perfectly aligns with your needs. Using my link betterhelp.com slash ericstruk or the link in the description, it not only helps support this channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp. And I know if I had them earlier growing up, it would have been amazing. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video, but now it is time for the first terrible flight. 
Getting on the plane, you can immediately tell how tight these things are for these short haul routes with minimal overhead bag space and soon enough I had arrived at my seat. Right off the bat, the seats appeared to be quite comfortable, but this plane in particular appeared to be quite dated. On the overhead above, I was happy to find a working reading lamp and air conditioning, but making my way back to the seat, I was definitely less impressed. First off, the legroom was fine for me, but if you're taller than 5'8", you're probably not going to enjoy it as much. And moving on to the tray table, even though it was quite large, it was also beat up and didn't pull out whatsoever, which was disappointing to see. Now the two saving factors I will say is that under the seats there was plenty of room for bags, and on top of that the seat actually reclines, because Spirit definitely won't be doing that later. But anyway, since this was such a small plane, soon enough we were fully boarded and pushing back from the gate to begin taxi. For the first flight of the day, we were going to be flying about an hour and a half from Toronto to Philadelphia, and soon after making our way towards the runway it was time to get into the sky. Now that I was in the air, I wanted to explore the seat some more, starting with the pouch on the back of the seat, which ended up breaking off, so I had to fix that real quick. Inside, I was able to find the in-flight entertainment and information, which unfortunately wasn't working for this flight and Wi-Fi cost it extra anyways, so instead I checked out the safety pamphlet that had another airline on it for some reason, but overall things were quite standard. Now normally a window seat is supposed to be great, but because this plane was so small, there was an awkward ledge, meaning I wasn't able to sit straight, and on top of that, this was one of the messiest planes I had ever been on. But to make things a little bit better, soon enough the flight attendant came around with drinks and snacks. For this flight, I only wanted a glass of water, but that's when I noticed the streak behind the cup, which turned out to be dried blood, which is disgusting. And for some reason, because of this, I wanted to see if the bathroom would be just as gross or not. At first glance, things were pretty standard with the toilet and amenities, until I realized that the door wouldn't even fully close and lock, the floor was sticky, and no matter how hard I tried, there was no running water to wash my hands. So I just had to make my way back to my seat. Now since this was such a short flight, by the time I got back we had begun our descent into Philadelphia, and eventually we came in for landing. And remember, this was only the first flight, and next I have a normal American Airlines flight, but we're finally flying Spirit, which is supposed to be worse than this. Okay, so that is flight number one complete. Overall, I have to say it was a pretty poor experience. The flight itself was quite messy. It was a smaller plane, so obviously things were a little bit more cramped. But it was also extremely loud, so I couldn't talk on there whatsoever. But the one plus side is that the staff were incredibly friendly. But now that we've arrived in Philly, we have to catch our connecting flight, and hopefully I don't miss it, because I think it leaves in like 25 minutes. So fingers crossed we make it. And in order to get to my connecting flight, I needed to take a shuttle to the other side of the airport, passing by tons of planes along the way, but eventually I was left off the shuttle. All right, so we have made it to the terminal, and now all we have to do is just find our gate. Hopefully that's easy enough. And lucky for me, things were pretty straightforward, with the flight still being on time, and I arrived at the gate just as the plane had begun boarding. Thank you. Flight number two. Hi. Good morning. Now thankfully, this time since it was a more traditional plane, there was plenty of room since it was in a normal 3x3 and eventually I made it to my seat. Right off the bat, doing the comfort test, things seemed to be pretty good, which also came with a fully adjustable headrest like most airlines have these days. Compared to the last flight, this seat was much more modern and up to date, but surprisingly the legroom was quite similar and anyone above 5'8 might find this to be on the tighter side. Now one thing about this seat that I really like was the fact that it had a USB port along with full size charging outlets, which is starting to be more and more rare these days. But there's still a bunch more that I'll be showing you in just a bit. And that's because I was one of the last people on the plane, and after the flight attendants closed the overhead bin, soon enough we were pushing back from the gate to begin taxiing. For this flight, I would be in the air for about two hours from Philadelphia to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and after making it to the runway, it was time to get into the sky. Okay, so we recently took off and they made an announcement that the free in-flight entertainment wasn't working. So far, we're off to a pretty bad start. For reference, that is the exact same in-flight entertainment that wasn't working on the previous flight, but at least I was able to check out the Wi-Fi and its prices, which was an insane $19 for the flight. Unless you were a T-Mobile customer, which is absolutely insane if you ask me. 
Making our way to the overhead, I found the LED reading lamp and air conditioning, which was working, and going back to the seat was another pouch, and thankfully this time it didn't break off. Another thing I noticed was this time there was no annoying side ledge for the window seat, and under was plenty of room for bags even though it was slightly messy. But anyways, now that we've been flying for a bit, the flight attendants began the in-flight service, so I opened up my tray table which was large like the previous flight, but this time it actually pulled out. As for the snacks, I decided to get some crackers with Dr. Pepper, which turned out to be pretty good, and now that we were just cruising, I had some time to really think about my experience so far and the last flight. Now one thing that I do want to say is the last time that I actually flew American was four years ago before the pandemic. And I'll be honest, I think I liked the service back then a little bit more. And obviously the flight from earlier was a really small plane, but I've flown Delta on that exact same model before. And Delta's layout was way better and it had much more room. But it's definitely going to be interesting to see how all this compares to flying Spirit Airlines, which we are going to be doing in just a bit. Now at this point, the only thing left to do was check out the bathroom, which was way Way better than the one on the previous flight with all the usual amenities but this time the water was actually working. But anyways, after returning to my seat, we flew over where they launched SpaceX rockets and began our descent into Fort Lauderdale before finally coming in for landing. And remember, now it's time to fly Spirit, which is supposed to be worse than American. So let's see what they are really like. And I have flown with them before, but every time that I've had, it's been a pretty bad experience. But for some reason, last night when I was doing the online check-in process, it actually ended up being way better than American. So after getting the email, I was brought to the check-in page before being harassed with extra things that Spirit wanted me to buy. But ignoring that and agreeing to not having any hazardous materials, I was all checked in. So now all we have to do is head inside, grab our boarding pass, and we can finally see how Spirit compares to American Airlines. And we can figure out which is really the worst airline in America. But guess what? I immediately ran into some pretty severe issues because after getting to the check-in kiosk and typing in my confirmation number, it said my flight was leaving from another airport or terminal, so I needed to go see an agent for assistance. So apparently I have to go and see a gate agent, which is slightly concerning. I guess we're about to figure out what's going on, because I have no idea why I got that air message. And in typical Spirit Airlines fashion, there was nobody, literally not a single person to help the agent assistance line of over 50 people. It turns out the Spirit customer service was non-existent. I was literally in the line for 15 minutes and there was not a single agent helping anybody. So I ended up just downloading their mobile app and somehow I was able to get my boarding pass that way. But so far, customer service and staff, absolutely useless. Which really isn't surprising because according to reviews, this is a common issue, along with tons of cancellations or delays. And based on the fact they pretty much have more terrible reviews than every other category combined, it's safe to say people don't like them. But regardless, now it's time to make my way through security so we can see how Spirit compares to American. So thankfully security was super fast, but now we gotta grab some food because I am starving. So the game plan now is I'm gonna quickly check out a lounge because I definitely need that after the terrible customer service experience. And then once we're done eating, we're gonna go board the flight because that's supposed to happen in like 20 minutes. So we gotta be quick. Today, I was grabbing a bite at the American Express Escape Lounge, which had an awesome view overlooking all the planes. For breakfast, there was an open bar, scrambled eggs, oatmeal, pancakes, hard boiled eggs, fruits, and a bunch more to choose from. And overall, the meal was quite delicious. So overall, I have to give that lounge a solid 9 out of 10. I've been there before, the food was great, the staff are amazing as always. But it is now 7.31 in the morning, which means that the flight is currently boarding. So we're gonna head there now and finally see what the Spirit Airlines experience is like. Now last time I flew Spirit, it was from this very same airport, and the flight ended up being delayed over five hours. But luckily this time when I got to my gate, we were still on time. So let's see how bad Spirit Airlines actually is. Good morning. Hi, mommy. Thank you. Time for the Spirit Airlines experience. Uh, I'm not prepared. And if you've never flown Spirit before, I promise you, you're about to get the full experience. Boarding the plane, I was greeted by the flight crew before making my way towards my seat. Now, even though these seats look nice, clean, and modern at the start, they are extremely deceptive because even though the cushion is comfy, the rest of the seat is still hard as a rock. And on top of that, there was no additional padding on the headrest 
and the armrests were extremely skinny and the seat doesn't even recline. But probably the worst thing of all are these sharp edges that will dig into your sides and even though I'm quite skinny, I had these stabbing into me for the entire flight. Now one huge plus side to Spirit is because of them charging so much for extra bags, the overheads are extremely empty. And since the seats are literally a plastic tub with nothing else, there is tons of room underneath the seats too. But probably the best silver lining to the seat situation is the fact that there's actually a pretty decent amount of legroom, which was great to see. Now since this was such an early flight in the morning, we ended up boarding pretty quickly, and before I knew it, we began pushing back from the gate and began taxiing. For today's flight, I'd be flying about an hour and a half from Fort Lauderdale, Florida to Tampa Bay, and after getting to the runway, it was time to take off. Starting things off in typical spirit fashion, every single cover for the life jackets just came off for some reason during takeoff, which I'm pretty sure is a bad thing. But to make matters worse, even though the overhead light was working on my seat, the air conditioning didn't, which sucks. Anyways, making our way back to the seat, I decided to check out the safety pamphlet, which was pretty standard, and I also found the menu for snacks. Now, if you didn't already know, on spirit, you need to pay for literally everything, including water, which in this case would cost you $4 for a bottle, which is quite frankly, insane. But at least this helps justify why the tray tables are so small because nobody's gonna have food anyways. Now one thing I will give credit for is that even though there was paid Wi-Fi, it was much more reasonable than American, which is a huge plus. But while I was looking around my seat, I noticed there were quite a few scratches and it was also very dirty. But now it's time for the most important part because after getting to the bathroom, it was definitely on the smaller side and I'm not sure if someone did their business on the seat, but besides that, things were quite decent, except for the water barely running. Now since this was such a short flight, after finishing up in the bathroom, I made my way back to my seat, just in time for us to begin our descent and come in for landing. So now the big question remains, which is truly America's worst airline? The fact that American charges the same price as Delta or United and is subpar is outrageous, while on the other hand, Spirit is Spirit. So overall, they are both losers. But if you enjoyed this video and want to see an actual good airline, watch this video next where I flew Air Canada business class.